Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, May 3rd, 5.50 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. July corn futures up three and a quarter at 8.06 and three quarters. December corn is up two and a quarter at 7.44 and a half. July soybeans down four and a quarter at 16.41. November soybeans down four and three quarters at 14.85 and three quarters. July Chicago wheat up one and three quarters at 10.57 and a quarter. July Kansas City wheat up six and a half at 11.04 and a half. July spring wheat is up four and three quarters at 11.72 and a half. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Leave me a rating, leave me a review. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, guys. We hit our uh, goal of 5,000 subscribers on Friday. My new goal, which is very lofty that I mentioned yesterday, is 100,000. It's doable. It's going to take a while. So help me out. Hit that subscribe button, like these videos, leave me a comment. If you need some additional assistance from me, guys, go to my website. It is www.standardgrain.com. Check out this premium subscription service. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information every single business day. It all comes direct from me. One thing that I should mention, as I know a lot of you guys are in the field, everything that I do is mobile friendly. So the emails are very easily read on your phone. There's no uh, PDF to open or anything like that. There's no login instructions. There, there's nothing along those lines. The videos are sent out via text message at midday, and they're also included in the emails. They're very easily accessible. You can even sign up for the subscription deal on your phone. So if you're out in the field, you haven't been in front of a computer, but you're interested, uh, hop on standardgrain.com uh, on your cell phone and you should be able to sign up give this deal a shot i did a subscriber only video yesterday i ran through a bunch of charts uh, some longer term grain charts ran through the energies and, and diesel in particular uh, interest rates i'm going to do a video today that will be blasted out at midday uh, where i run through the soybean balance sheets we're going to look at the u.s soybean balance sheets in particular run through some different acreage scenarios yield scenarios demand scenarios and i will attempt to kind of tell you uh, some different uh, price possibilities based on those variables. So if you guys are interested, absolutely give it a shot here today. India's wheat crop is likely to be smaller than expected, and India is a big wheat producer. Uh, globally speaking, India is essentially the second largest wheat producer behind China. They'd be third if you count the EU as a country in itself. But um, the country, India, recorded its hottest March in 122 years. Prior to the growing season, they were expecting a record crop. Now, now, uh, not really so much. 111 million metric tons was the expectation. Prior to the growing season, they're now down to about 105 and falling. So this is not a disaster, but uh, it's another issue in regard to global wheat. We know we've got Russia. We know we've got Ukraine, that whole situation. We've know we, get, we know that we have uh, issues here in the United States when it comes to the wheat crop, and I'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, India is a big producer, but not a huge exporter. But still, this is going to have some impact on the global wheat balance sheets. Uh, traders cited in this Reuters piece here this morning calling for reduced exports and reduced production versus preseason expectations. So more problems uh, in global wheat. Brazilian corn production estimates are falling. Uh, Stonex, which is a very well-followed group, pegged the crop at 116.5 million, down from their previous estimate of 118.6. They're still above USDA's estimate, even with this lower number. USDA is at 116. Uh, Stonex actually increased their soybean production estimate just marginally. They're still at 123.4, which is uh, very low. So with this corn production estimate 116, that's still a new record by a fairly wide margin. The previous record was only 102 uh, back from two years ago. Ago. Key second corn growing areas in Brazil were hit by dry weather in April and into this month. So you may see estimates continue to decline. Uh, USDA may update their number uh, next week. U.S. corn planting remains very slow. Only 14% of the crop planted nationally as of Sunday versus 7% last week, way behind the 33% average. Um, we've had cold, wet conditions throughout the Corn Belt. When you go state by state here, corn planting, Iowa is only 9% complete versus 42 on average. Illinois, 7% complete versus 43 on average. Indiana is 6% complete with corn in, uh, versus 25 on average. Minnesota's at zero versus 28 on average. Ohio, 3% versus 16 on average. Uh, North Dakota, nothing done. South Dakota, 3% done. Nebraska's 28% done versus 34 on average. Kansas, 35% done with corn versus 36 on average. So a very slow uh, corn planting pace still. Soybean planting also slow. Only 8% done nationally there versus three last week and 13 on average. Uh, just getting started. There are a few states. Uh, that are ahead of their respective five-year averages when it comes to soybean planting. Those states that are ahead of, of the average pace include Kansas, Nebraska, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and North Carolina. 
Winter wheat ratings still very poor, only 27% good to excellent nationally. That's unchanged on the week, but way below that 51% average. I will say that some of these HRW wheat areas in the Southern Plains caught some rains here this week, and you could see a bump in ratings next week as a result of that, I suppose. Now, speaking of rains, we do have some rain on the radar here this morning over kind of the heart of the Corn Belt, Iowa. Uh, Illinois, uh, parts of Missouri into Indiana and Ohio. So uh, planting may be back at a standstill in some of those areas. Once this system passes, um, you'll see an additional system move into some of these same areas, say Thursday or Friday this week. Uh, notably dry areas will be like the Dakotas into southern Minnesota. They're not going to see nearly as much here over the next week. Uh, temperatures will continue to run below normal until early next week, and then you'll see a little bit of a warm-up. Um, you look at the next seven days here, and there's scattered rains everywhere, but uh, the real like sizable stuff will be more in, say, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, uh Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, those sort of places. Uh, when you look at the 6 to 10, wetter than normal potentially for the central to western Corn Belt and uh, really kind of same thing in the 8 to 14. So this is still not an ideal forecast, but, you know, windows will emerge and, and a lot of farmers these days don't need much of a window uh, to get the crop planted. The Fed is expected to hike interest rates again tomorrow. Traders generally expect a half point increase to the Fed fund rate after a quarter point increase last month. More traders and analysts are discussing the possibility of a recession as the Fed attempts to tame surging inflation. They're just generally fearful that the Fed will be too aggressive here, too aggressive with rate hikes and rolling off the balance sheet, that sort of thing. Uh, that sort of thing. Interest rate markets have already discounted several more rate hikes this year. I wonder just personally if there would be any of this recession talk if the stock market was acting better. We've seen a lot of weakness in the stock market and, you know, sentiment tends to kind of follow price, generally speaking. So the S&P is down almost 13 percent year to date. If the S&P was flat year to date, would we be talking recession? I'm not sure. Uh, this is all interesting stuff. And this is the biggest thing going on, uh, in my view, at least in, in kind of the macroeconomic environment. What will the Fed do with rates? What will they do with uh, easing and policy and all that sort of stuff? Cattle market had a good day yesterday. Uh, rebound uh, higher in the fat cattle, sharply higher in the feeder cattle, more than five dollars higher in some of those feeder cattle contracts hog market lower again the uh, u.s dollar is marginally lower ahead of the cash open the s p is down 17 the dow's down 150 uh, bonds are higher gold and silver are mixed crude oil is down about a buck and a half 102 even in the july wti everybody have a great day today I'll talk to you guys same time tomorrow